The 2023 International Chemistry Olympiad starts in two days. Well, for most of you guys, it's probably going to be tomorrow by the time you see this video. And because it's so close, I wanted to make a sort of last minute tips for all of you guys actually going to the ICHO. If you're one of these people, then first of all, massive congrats for making it. It's not very many people who get to say that they went. It's only four people per country per year. I'm going to be breaking up this video into three segments before during and after the examination period and there are going to be timestamps in the description if you want to jump around starting with before the examination period tip number one is going to be to trust yourself you already made it so you clearly put in the effort and you know a lot of chemistry and trust me when i say that you know more than you think you know I've been surprised many times by myself when I thought, oh, there's no way I'm going to solve this question. And then I tried and I managed to do it. So just trust yourself. You're going to be able to do it. The questions are designed to be difficult, but they're not designed to be impossible. And in fact, there's an entire committee working at 3 a.m. in the morning, making sure that the questions are solvable and fair. Now moving on to tip number two, it's going to be just to rest. I don't think it's worth studying more and stressing yourself out because that one extra reaction that you might learn is probably not even going to be on the exam and it's simply a better use of your time to let your brain chill out a little bit and the final tip for before the exam period is going to be to try to sleep at least eight hours the night before any exam let that be the theoretical or the practical and this is because if you're asleep during the exam i don't think you're going to do very well so make sure that you're not tired and that you're fully awake during the five hours next moving on to tips during the five hours this is probably what most of you guys came here for. If you've seen any previous video, you've already heard this. Read the question. Every single word. Don't miss a single word when reading the question. Very important. There are often important pieces of information in the text of the question, as we shall see from this example. So here you might want to jump ahead and try to figure out what C and D are before even reading the question. But notice that if you read the question, it tells you that D is a gaseous byproduct, which gives you information that almost always makes the problem easier to solve. Tip number two is to count your atoms. It is extremely easy to miss a carbon atom in, for example, a in a chain of carbon atoms and draw one less or one more. And they are going to take points away for that. In a previous video, for example, I missed the highlighted carbon atom. I just completely left it out. And although I noticed my mistake a few minutes later, if I didn't, the molecule would technically be completely wrong and they would take points away, which would be very unfortunate since that's the easy part. Number three is going to be to pace yourself in the lab. You're going to have five hours to do three experiments and you're going to have to do them concurrently. So you're going to be doing multiple experiments at the same time. And it's possible that one of the experiments requires you to heat something for, I don't know, like three hours. So make sure you read the whole thing in the beginning. Spend like 10 to 15 minutes reading the whole thing and making a vague plan of when you're going to do what. Because if you're two and a half hours in and you reach a section that says heat it for three hours, you're screwed. And the final step for during the exam period is going to be to look both forward and backwards in reaction schemes. So in this example, to figure out the stereochemistry of F, you look at the previous intermediate in the red circle. But if you want to figure out the stereochemistry of I, you look at the next intermediate or actually the final product in this case, in the green circle. And this doesn't just apply to stereochemistry, this applies to substructures and pretty much anything that you can think of. Solving organic questions is just as much going forward as going backwards and trying to figure out what happened. And now moving on to tips for after the exam period is over, but you're still in Zurich. Unfortunately, in my year, it was the COVID year, so I wasn't really able to experience this. Tip number one is to not worry. You already did everything that you can. If you feel like you didn't do great, there's nothing to worry about because there's nothing you can do about it. If you feel like you did awesome, that's great, but don't worry about being first or second or getting a gold or a silver medal because once again, there's nothing that you can do about it. All you gotta do is just wait. Now, I know this is easier said than done, but I feel like if you internalize the fact that you can't change the outcome anymore, it's easier to not worry. Once the exam period is over, things basically turn into a vacation. I'm pretty sure they bring you on sightseeing trips, so that's awesome. And you're around a bunch of people with similar interests, so make a bunch of friends. You never know who you're going to be working with in the future. Maybe you already met them. 
And my final tip for this video is to give yourself some time off after all this is done. The next International Chemistry Olympiad is in a year. So if you give yourself a week or a month off, you're going to be just fine. A year is a really, really long time and you're going to have plenty of time to prepare for next year. And some rest never hurts in order to avoid burnout. I hope you guys enjoyed this little bit of a different video. If you're going to Zurich, then good luck. If you want to see similar content in the future, then don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.